Hello everyone and welcome to Electric Scooter Repair. Today we're working on a Cabo Wolf Warrior X. This scooter was purchased only a week ago and the customer has brought it in complaining that the front motor no longer provides power. In this video I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot this problem, replace the front motor, as well as the junction box inside of the deck. Alright, let's get started. First, I'm going to check the little toggle switch up on the handlebars that changes between the single and dual motor mode. To test this, I'm going to swap it out with a new switch. To separate these Julet connectors, it's important that you hold them by the connector and not by the wire when you pull them apart. It's also important to pay attention to these little arrows that are printed on the outside of the connector. They need to be aligned with one another when you put it back together. Otherwise, the pins inside of the connector are going to get damaged. Unfortunately for me, substituting in a new switch made no difference here. But I have noticed that the front motor is not spinning freely. In fact, the brake rotor is so bent that I can barely rotate the motor by hand. And I imagine that this additional drag, along with the rider's weight, could have caused the motor and or the controller to fail. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the deck and have a look at everything inside. I'll start by peeling up the rubber deck mat, not entirely, but just enough to expose the screws around the edge. Then I'm going to use a 3mm Allen key to remove these screws. I recommend that you at least get these started by hand, if not remove them entirely by hand, because the hardware that comes with these from the factory is not great and there's a good chance if you're not really careful uh, that you're going to strip one of these out and make a lot more work for yourself so save some time and do it by hand. Now that we're inside the deck I don't see much that's out of order at first glance. No obvious signs of heat or water damage. I'm going to check this junction box and make sure that all the connectors in here are fully seated that they're all pushed into place. This junction box is just that. It basically connects all these wires together in the way that they need to be. And it's commonly a problem on these Cabo scooters. So I'm going to try swapping it out and see if that makes any difference. I recommend that you go one connector at a time from the native box to the new box. Otherwise, if you disconnect everything all at once, it can be easy to get the connectors in the wrong spot and that can cause a whole host of other problems. Okay, at this point I've installed the new junction box and unfortunately I still don't have any power going to the front motor. So I'm going to assume it's either the motor or the controller or both and I'm going to substitute a new front motor. So I'm going to connect the front motor from this scooter to the controller of the native scooter that I've been working on and it works. So it looks like we've got a bad motor. To remove the front motor, first we're going to remove this weird twisty tie phone cord cable retainer. Then cut a couple of zip ties. And when you get to these little plastic covers, you're going to find that your Allen key probably isn't going to fit in here very well. So a small ratchet and a three millimeter bit can save a lot of time. Now you're going to get to the point where you could almost pull this cable through the hole in the frame, but you're going to find that this black JST connector is just a little bit too big to fit through. And while there is a tool for removing these pins from the connector, in this case they've glued the wires in place. So our only option is going to be to cut this connector off. Set it aside to use as a reference when we rebuild this connector later. Now I'm just going to remove this caliper to get it out of my way and I'm going to use an 18 millimeter socket and I do strongly recommend that you use a socket to remove the axle nuts as opposed to like a box end wrench. I've seen a lot of these come in stripped so use a socket. I've got a set of pliers just to remove these retaining washers on either side of the motor and once those are out of the way the motor is just going to drop down. I'm going to take the old motor out, put the new motor in, 
when you go to mount the motor onto the forks it's going to have two of these little flanged washers on either side with the flange facing down along with the motor cable these are important so i'm going to say it again the flange is facing down the motor cable is facing down and now we're just going to lift the motor up into the forks I'm going to use my lift and this stool to hold the motor in place while I add the washers on the outside of the forks. For the outside washers, the flange is going to be facing up and going into this little well here. Now we're going to apply some red Loctite and you should be able to get the axle nuts started by hand and this will help to avoid cross threading. With the new motor mounted and the cable run through into the deck, I need to rebuild this JST connector for the motor halls. These wires help the controller time the pulses to the motor. Crimping and building JST connectors is going to be its own video, so if you're interested in that, be sure to like and subscribe to my channel. In my experience, the insulation on these motor phase wires can break down and become problematic, so I'm going to add some additional heat shrink over the ends here. Now at this point in the operation, we're ready to close the patient. We need to ensure that all the cables are in their correct location, that all the connectors are fully seated, and that most importantly, all the wires are going to be out of the way so that they don't get pinched when we put the deck cover back on. Carefully ensure that the gasket is lined up with all the holes on the deck. Lay the deck cover into position. Take one last peek to ensure that there's no wires that are going to get pinched in there. And then close it down. We're going to need to reattach that brake caliper. We need to get the caliper evenly centered around the rotor so that when the rotor spins around it's not coming in contact with the brake pads or making any noise. Reattach this Curly Q cable retainer, as well as a couple zip ties. Reinstall this plastic cover, and that's it. This scooter is ready to be back on the road. If you enjoyed this video and or found it helpful, give it a like and consider subscribing. I've got a lot of scooters to fix around here, so stay tuned.